Welcome back to Crux Stationalis, the Roman Station Church Network. Today we head to the Cathedral of the World, the Cathedral of Rome, the Church of Churches, the most important church in Rome, the Archbasilica of St. John Lateran. St. John Lateran is the Roman Station Church for Holy Thursday, for this day which our Lord gave us a new command, a new command to love one another as he has loved us. And we go there to see the relic of the table of the Last Supper. The official name of St. John Lateran is the Archbasilica Cathedral of the Most Holy Savior and of Saints John the Baptist and John the Evangelist in the Lateran. After Emperor Constantine conquered Rome and legalized Christianity, eventually the Lateran Palace was given to the Bishop of Rome. Pope Sylvester I presided over the official dedication of the Archbasilica and the adjacent Lateran Palace in the year 324 dedicating it to Christ the Savior. We head inside and walk to the high altar of the Lateran, and we see in the baldacchino of the altar two busts which hold the relics of Saints Peter and Paul, the two Prince Apostles of Rome. During the Lenten Roman Station Church pilgrim itinerary, we visit the Basilica of Santa Pudenciana, the house church where St. Peter celebrated Mass. Here in the high altar is kept also a relic of the altar upon which St. Peter celebrated Mass. And so on the holy day of Maundy Thursday, the day upon which Christ gave of himself to us, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the most holy Eucharist, that day in which Christ the cornerstone was struck and the apostles fled, we come to this church wherein the seat of the Bishop of Rome is kept. We see in the niches which line the central nave of the church statues of the apostles. Though they fled Christ in his passion, they professed anew their love for him in his resurrection. Above this altar of the Blessed Sacrament, the relic of the table of the Last Supper is kept, that table upon which Jesus gave us himself in the Most Holy Eucharist. And now I read to you from the Gospel of St. John, the commandment of love which flows from the very mystery of the gift of the Eucharist. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over, so you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. I am not speaking of all of you. I know those whom I have chosen. But so that the scripture might be fulfilled, the one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on I am telling you before it happens, 
so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. When he had said this, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it, and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After he took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, Buy what we need for the feast, or to give something to the poor. So he took the morsel and left at once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go you cannot come. So now I say it to you, I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said to him, Master, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. A meditation about St. Peter's denial. St. Peter fell into sin for one brief hour and bewailed his fall during the whole remainder of his life. Never did he forget that he had sinned and displeased his beloved master. By how many enormous faults have you displeased your good God, your amiable Redeemer? Repeatedly renew your acts of contrition. St. Peter did not for one moment delay his repentance and conversion. How long has God called and invited you to repentance? Resolve this very day to be converted to God. Do not wait till tomorrow, as perhaps tomorrow time for you may be no more.